I thought I should touch base on my the way that I have my blow by two booked up on my 12 valve because a couple guys have commented about it. So I thought I should maybe do a video. So it is actually very simple. You do need a welder to do it. Um, I guess, yeah, you need a welder to do it. So if you can't weld, you have to find somebody how to weld, somebody that can weld for you, and you will need a couple little things. Now I'm going to show you a couple different ways to do it, a couple different ways I've done it, um, and a couple different ways that I've done it, and I will show you um, the idea of how it works. It's actually very simple. So I'll show you on my truck here just quick, and it is very. I don't have a um, an actual blow by box or a catch can. Basically, this tube here runs into the exhaust, right? It comes from the one on the side of the engine. So, <clears throat> basically, the theory behind this, which is very simple, is your engine is always going to make a little bit of positive pressure from more than one thing. So, you're going to get positive pressure, usually a little tiny bit from your turbo or turbochargers, um, because the the ceiling rings were just like piston rings have little gaps in them. So you'll get a little bit from that under high boost, little tiny bit, not very much, <clears throat> but you will get a little tiny bit. You will get from actual blow by, which is ring is combustion gas coming around the rings and through the ring gaps. You will get it from that or an engine that's worn bad. And then also your vacuum pump um, on these engines, 12 elves, um, you will get a positive pressure from that because it's basically, it pulls vacuum. Anything it pulls vents back into the crankcase. So if you have a vacuum leak or anything like that can be a blow by problem, not actually a blow by problem. So if you're ever having that problem, plug off your vent on there or make sure there's no leaks. Like my, this truck here, my 95 is a vacuum brake booster. So that's a problem. You can't do that because you know power breaks. But check that system, make sure you have no leaks. Anyways, we won't get into that. Talking about the crankcase ventilation, Venturi. So Venturi is basically what we're building. So in theory, all you're, all you're doing is taking the volume of air that's going through your exhaust, like I showed you on my truck, and you're putting a small tube into that and you're pulling a vacuum on that tube. It's not an astronomical vacuum, a little tiny bit of vacuum. I've actually never measured it to see how much it is. It's probably not a crazy vacuum. But it seems to, when you do that, one, you don't have any seal leaks. Two, you don't have to worry about the, um, you know, the little drip out of the blow-by tube because it just goes into the exhaust and burns it off. You can put a uh, catch can on it if you want. You do a sealed catch can. I've done a couple with, with catch cans. Unless, like on the uh, first gen when we put it back together, I'm going to do a catch can on that that vents into the exhaust um, just because that's going to have big ring gaps so it'll probably slobber a little bit. But this thing, it never comes out the exhaust or anything like that. And the last engine we had in there, I didn't have it set up because I was curious how much that engine was actually going to breathe. This engine is a new engine, but it does have a decent sized ring gap because I knew I was going to run it hard. So it does slobber a little bit, but not that much. But putting that on there, no seal leaks, no, doesn't leak oil anywhere any of that stuff. So that is one upside to it. It tends to keep them from leaking, being they do tend to leak. So, especially if they're high milers. So let's get into showing you, I'm gonna show you how this one is done. Basically, I don't have a piece of the pipe that I actually did it with. We used the last piece on there. But we're gonna, um, this is gonna be the exhaust. So just pretend this is the exhaust in the truck. Basically what we're gonna do is we're gonna drill, you wanna drill, I'm not gonna drill it into this, but I'll show you what I mean. So basically you're gonna drill a hole that's not very good, is it? You're gonna drill the hole. And usually when I drill the hole, I go straight in with the hole and then I take my drill bit and I'll crank it on an angle because you want that tube to go inside there on an angle. Well, it has to go in on an angle. So I just got this old, you don't wanna use something like this. You wanna use, I use a piece of 5 8 tube. So your OD is 5 8 or you could do OD three quarters, just depending on what you can get and you can get it from wherever it just just needs to be a cheap piece of pipe but you're going to deal with you're going to take something straight obviously to start with right and there is a little bit of monkey and that has to happen you do need to bend it but it's not that bad not that bad to bend for the most part 
What you're gonna do, so pretend this is a piece, a piece of straight tube. Basically what you need to do, obviously you're not gonna be able to do it with your fingers. You're gonna want to put a kink in it there and then another little bend in it there. So basically when it comes out of the pipe or comes out of the exhaust, it's gonna go in the exhaust. This part's gonna be in the exhaust and then where this transition is, where it goes like this, I realize that's not perfectly straight so it's not just perfect, but you're gonna come out, there's gonna, you're gonna put like a 23 degree, 23 degree, and then in the middle of that 23 degrees, if you were to, like this, if you were to imagine this is a round hole, basically you're gonna go inside there. And what you wanna do is you wanna get this, you wanna get this not touching the sides, but going in there kinda of like, basically kinda of like that is what you wanna do, if that makes sense to you guys. And you can monkey around with it, but you basically just wanna get that piece down inside there, straight with the pipe but inside the pipe, right? So you're gonna be like, kind of like that. And then as it comes out, I might not put quite enough bend in it there, just give you an idea. And then where I have my blow by tube is hooked up right here. And then you just weld around, weld around where that's gonna come. And basically the exhaust, especially at lower RPM, you don't get so much vacuum, but at a high RPM, you're actually gonna get, you get a pretty good, like you put your finger on that blow by tube at 2,500 RPM, and it, su it doesn't suck your finger in, but it puts, you can feel the vacuum on it. And that's what you want. So you get that in there, you hook your blow-by tube up, and that will fix that problem. If you want to put a blow-by box in, or I call it blow-by box, what you want to do is mount it. You don't want a filter on it, unless you're talking high, high horsepower stuff. But I don't usually put a filter on them. You can put a filter if you really want. Um just so that it bypasses whatever else is there. But for the most part, if you up up the size of the line, it'll it'll stack anything out that you want as long as the line is big enough, but because there's always gonna be a bit of vacuum on it. But basically, you're just gonna take your catch can, you put a, your tube in the catch can, and then you're putting your media baffles, whatever you're putting in there. And then instead of having that filter on the top, you're gonna take the filter off. If you build one, obviously, you're not gonna just put a filter on it. Um, you're gonna have it so that it comes out of there and then it goes into the exhaust pipe, like I just showed you with the Venturi. Now, there is more than one way to build it. We're gonna go over to the board here in a second. Because you can buy them too, and then you can just weld it in there. They're super easy to build. I'll put a couple pictures up um, when I'm talking about it over there. I'll, I'll, I found a couple pictures. I'll, I'll put them in here to show you what I mean. But super simple to do. So you can either do it with a piece of pipe, like I was just talking. You just need to buy a piece of pipe. If you don't want to buy a piece of pipe, that's fine. You don't have to buy a piece of pipe like that and bend it because I realize some of you guys maybe won't have a torch because you will need a torch. You need to get it red hot to be able to bend it around or you need a little pipe bender or something. Usually all I do, maybe I should just show you quick. I'll just show you quick. <clears throat> I'll show you on this how I would normally do it. So usually I would just take it and hopefully you guys will be able to see this. It's not too light back here. So basically if this was perfectly straight, what you would do is if you wanted to put your bend right here, you're gonna heat all the way around that tube and then you're gonna stick it in something kind of like at the trailer hitch here. It doesn't have to be the trailer hitch, that just happens to be what I used last time. And if you heat that and stick it in there, it'll bend just like that did. And then obviously you're gonna put bend, you're gonna wanna heat it out here and then do the same thing, just not get it tied up or anything and do the same thing so you get that super simple you can do it in a vice too <clears throat> you can do it in a vice too i just find when you have a round hole like that it seems to bend it nice so like i said you're just gonna you know your hole will be right kind of right here and then this piece is going to be inside the exhaust right and like you want to have a good six inches sticking inside the pipe i found if you use a good six inches you get a good vacuum on it now another way to do it and put a 45 degree cut on it. I'll show you on the board here, just so you understand what I'm saying. <clears throat> Basically what you're gonna do is take this piece of pipe. So this is your piece of pipe, thread, thread. Knife at 45, so you're gonna actually end up with two of them. But knife it at 45, so you're now gonna have, I guess I could just, we can just erase this off. What you're gonna do is end up and you can cut it a little bit longer if you want. Actually, let me redraw it, just so I can make it better. 
So this is going to be your piece of pipe with your 45 on it. This is going to be your threads. <clears throat> Basically what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to put this style into the exhaust about, you know, probably up to here, but you're going to want about, I would say like from this point to this point, about two inches, about two inches from this point to this point. So on your, your sharp, your shortest point, and when you put it into the exhaust, what you want is the exhaust to run by. So this is going to be, hmm, how do I explain that easiest way? <clears throat> you want this to be 45 degrees to the pipe. So when you're putting it into the pipe, well, actually, hold on, I'll explain that in a second because I'm going to have to erase it so I can draw it again. But what you need to do to this is in this two inch piece, you're going to cut a notch out of it. So you're going to take that, that piece out of it. And basically what that does is it, it promotes to add flow to the system. I've never really noticed that much doing it, but apparently it does work. So what do I know? So we'll, we'll go with, if you do it this way, it does work. Or you can do it like the way I just showed you. That also works quite well. I've done it that way a hundred times, never had an issue with it. You can do it this way if it's hard, you know, if you don't have a way of bending, but you can weld, this is really easy. So basically you're just gonna wanna cut a notch in it, kind of like <clears throat> the, a flute has in it. So most of you guys are gonna know what a flute looks like. You're gonna wanna put a notch in there. And when you do that, it adds, so when the exhaust flows by it, it actually tends, it tends the exhaust or the, the air, this is exhaust in this case, is gonna go in the hole and promote flow. So what we're gonna do, I'm just gonna redraw this quick. So just remember that two inches, put your cut in there with your 45. So I'm just gonna draw this out again. So if this is your exhaust, this is, let's say your four inch exhaust here, right? Exhaust. What you're gonna do is you're gonna go in, I'm gonna do as if we were, as, as you're doing it, it doesn't matter whether it's on the side, on the top, on the bottom. I usually put it on the side just like I did on that one that you guys seen, but I'm gonna show you just on, on the top of it here. So we're gonna come in on a 45 degree angle with that piece, right? You're gonna come in on a 45 degree angle. So then your pieces like this, your threads, so then your hose to your blow by. I knew how to spell would be laughing today. So your blow by tube, right? And you want to make sure this hose is at least five eighths, at least. Um, if you go lower than that, you tend to not have enough because you want to make sure if the engine does have to vent for some reason, it has enough uh, tube to vent. So doing, even doing like five eighths, three quarters, one inch, you won't hurt anything bigger than five eighths. So you're going to come in there, there's your 45. And then that notch that I was talking about, because your exhaust flow is this way, you're going to want to put that notch in right here. And then just take this, just so it's easier for you guys to see. And you put that in there. Basically the idea behind it is that the exhaust comes in, goes into that notch, and then will flow out like that basically is the idea behind it. Like I said, I know that this works because I've built different Venturis for different stuff. So this does work. I find that the way that I've done it there works as well. But if you don't have a torch to heat with and bend that tube or don't feel like you can bend that tube around, this is an easy way to, you can do it with a grinder. If you have a, if you have a welder, I'm sure you have a grinder. So you can do it this way. And like I said, this is going to be an NPT. So you're just going to put, you know, you put your, put your adapter on there to a hose barb or however you're going to stuff it on there whatever you do but doing that like I said you're gonna stop oil leaks you're gonna stop you're gonna help stop oil leaks you don't have to worry about it dripping on the ground uh, you know there's there's multiple and there is also benefits to having a vacuum on the crankcase system does actually help with performance is there enough vacuum from doing it like this to give you a performance gain 
that I'm not sure of. Basically, it releases, uh, re releases reduces, um, it reduces turbulence in the crankcase when it's on a vacuum. One day, when I get my dive on, which won't be for a few days because I got some stuff going on that I need to deal with, or I shouldn't say stuff to deal with, I got stuff that, uh, I got some changes that I want to do, so that's going to throw us off for a little bit here. But anyways, not a big deal. Nothing for you guys to worry about. Channel's not going anywhere. But that would actually be some cool videos to do to see how much power difference there is when you put a vacuum on one of these, how the vacuum's done, blah, blah, blah. So that is something to keep tuned for. Probably not in the next year or so, I don't think. But after that, you never know. So it just depends on how the channel goes, depends on how the rest of my life goes, all that type of stuff. So... But there is benefits for it. Keeps the engine from leaking oil. Also keeps the a um, little bit better power. You don't leak any oil out of your blow-by tube. There's lots of benefits to it. One thing is you wanna make sure that you don't have any other vents. That is something that I wanted to mention. Make sure you don't have any other vents. So if you have the vent on the, let's say you have one on the valve cover, which if you do a valve cover one, you also 99% of the time will never ever ever have much for for oil coming out of that tube because it's designed to actually catch the oil where the one on the side is just a generic bad idea. But if you do have that one on the valve cover, you want to hook up to that one and you need to block the other one off or you need to wire them together. So usually if you have the one on the valve cover, I would just block the one off on the crankcase, completely do away with it. If you um, have like an extra filter on the system or something like that, as long as it's actually got a filter on it, you can leave it like that if you want. I personally don't see the point because if it has a filter on it, you're gonna to have to clean it because now you're putting a vacuum in the system. So that filter is gonna get plugged with stuff and it's not gonna do anything other than it's gonna let dirt get sucked into the engine, into the oil, which makes doesn't make sense that you're, you don't want dirt in your oil. So do away with that. Um, and if you get it hooked up this way, like I said, if you want a blow by box or, um, a catch cam, whatever you want. I call it a blow-by box, but if you want a catch cam or a blow-by box, you can put it in line. And if you're putting it in line, like I said before, you're gonna have, <clears throat> if you are if you have it set up like this, I'm gonna do a quick little drawing here because I'm sure somebody's gonna ask. So if you got the engine, this is gonna be a crude engine, but. So there's your engine, flywheel. So you're gonna come, your bull by tube on the side of the engine, I guess I should have done it the other way. So this is the front. Your bull by tube is gonna come out of here, right? You're gonna go into your blow by box, which if it just has, let's say, it depends on how you build it. If you bought one, it usually is just gonna have plates in it. If you built it, it could have plates, it could have media in it. Um, but you know, you're just gonna have, you know, plates that go across here and then, uh, you're gonna take the vent out of wherever it's gonna go. Usually, ah, I just got drawn, I got that drawn wrong. Usually you're gonna vent into it here and then the air has to go up and then it's gonna come out of the top. Usually this is where the filter's gonna be. That's where I would do away with this filter. So if there's a filter here, you wanna do away with that. And then you're just gonna come out of there and go right into here. So your flow being going that direction, right? <clears throat> if that's what you, if you want to hook it up that way there again don't have to just depends on how you want to do it but if you want to put in a catch can or a blow by box you know by all means have at her i've never seen the point like i said on the race truck i'm going to because i know it's going to breathe heavy and i just want to make sure that i'm not uh, you know i'm not spewing any oil out onto the track when we're monkeying around so hopefully that helps you guys out um you know if you want to put one of these things on there at a certain point um, I'll probably have, <clears throat> I'll probably have some of this stuff on the website, but obviously the website is not up yet because I haven't told you about it. We are working on it. Um, I'm trying to integrate it. We had scrapped the way that we were going to put parts on. I'm trying to integrate it with a company, which is going to give you guys a much broader, um, amount of product that you can buy. And we're just having issues with getting it. Uh, how do I say that? Getting it set up just the right way to make everything work. So that's the problem with that and not spending, you know, $50,000 building it because yeah, you know what I mean? 
Give me a comment down below, like, subscribe, hit the bell notification button, and remember, it's not rocket science.